Hello friends, how are you? I hope that you're very good. I'm Chris from citycountrypets.com.au, who welcome you to our channel again. In this video, we're going to reveal everything about silkworms in Australia. But before we start, we remind you that if you're a lover of the natural world, pets, and all kinds of insects, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you see all the videos that we upload each week with very interesting information about pets of all kinds, maintenance and care. And now, without further ado, let's begin. Silkworms. Would you like to breed silkworms? This is an experience that amazes many children, seeing their metamorphosis from the egg to the moth. These industrious little worms have a long history that dates back to 2640 BC in China, when they began to be used to extract their protein fibre to create silk. In current times, the breeding of these silkworms has become very popular. A modern practice that has originated from an ancient profession in Asia is now shared by many people around the world as a fun little hobby and pastime. Sericulture, or the cultivation of silkworm, spread through China in 139 BC. It was at this time that the world's largest trade route was opened, spanning from eastern China to the Mediterranean Sea, known as the Silk Route, turning silk into a highly valued item that others would later want to get. Nowadays, sericulture is still in practice around the world, though in a much more industrial and modern setting. Did you know, bearded dragons love silkworms as food? The silkworms have a very good nutritional content that is healthy and beneficial for the lizard, while also being very enriching for them. Now, I'll tell you about the life cycle of a silkworm. Silkworms go through four stages of life. First, an egg. Then, a larva. Then, a chrysalis or pupa. And finally, as a moth. It all begins as the moth lays down the eggs. Then, once they hatch, the eggs become larvae, little tiny worm or caterpillar-like creatures that feast on mulberry leaves. And once they've had their fill, they spin themselves into a cocoon, where they will remain for some time. Once they've remained in the cocoon, they hatch out into a moth, and the life cycle begins all over again. The entire cycle only lasts a few weeks, so it's very easy to observe in real time. The most fascinating part of its life cycle is when the larvae begins to spin its cocoon. It anchors itself using some silk to a point, and then begins over the next 48 hours to knit itself a cocoon. And then, after about 10 or 12 days, a moth will emerge from the cocoon. Where did the silkworms originate from? It comes from a moth called the Bombyx mori. It's a wild moth of the Bombycidae family, native to North Asia. However, today we find it in many parts of the world. Did you know that silkworm eggs are only between 1 and 1.5 millimeters long, made of a shell membrane of chitinous matter, characterized by being yellow at when they're first laid, and by changing to a leaden grey after 48 hours if it is fertilised. Where can you buy silkworms? Silkworms can be bought on the internet. Many places offer silkworms for sale, however you should choose specialised stores to buy authentic specimens of silkworms and a complete guide for the breeding, care and maintenance of the larvae, as well as feeding instructions and more, to prevent any kinds of disasters from happening to your silkworms. Many pet stores also supply silkworms. How is silk made? Saracen, which is an extremely sticky substance or protein, is a fibre that the worm creates a silk thread with, up to a kilometre long, with which it will make the cocoon. The cocoon is the material that is collected to create what we now know as silk. The silkworms eat exclusively mulberry leaves for their content of dextrin, which they use to create all of that silk. To actually create the silk, the silkworms have two glands located below their digestive tract. It first starts off as a liquid inside the body, which solidifies upon coming into contact with the air. It is a very durable and sturdy material, perfect for making garments of clothing. Or maybe a cocoon. How do you care for silkworms? Silkworms can be kept in a box or glass terrarium and with a steady supply of mulberry leaves. Be careful not to try and feed them any other kind of leaf as they will not eat it and they will starve. Mulberry leaves are very common and can usually be found around rivers or even in city parks. If not, you can find them online. If you can find a mulberry tree, make sure only to remove a few handfuls of the leaves, as it will be plenty for your silkworms. Silkworms as pets. Silkworms make fantastic pets. It's very educational and easy to care for little insects, which can be used to demonstrate the life cycle to your children. 
They do not bite or inflict any harm on humans at all, no matter what the size or age. If you live in Sydney, Australia, you can find our store specialising in various types of animals as pets, including silkworms. We even have large terrariums specifically conditioned for optimal and safe development of your silkworms. Here's a link so you can find our website to purchase them. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel if you want to hear more videos like these. Your support allows our channel to grow and thus reach more lovers of animals and insects. Have a happy weekend. From all of us at citycountrypets.com.au One big hug and I'll see you next time.